Good afternoon, everyone. Oh, good morning, excuse me. I'm a little ahead of the game. Good to see you at the easel. Make sure you've got all of your supplies at hand. If not, you know, you can pause my stream and, and catch back up with me in a little bit, or you can watch the pre-recording, the re-recording on YouTube later this afternoon. As a reminder, we are starting on Oogie Boogie this morning. I, you may be wondering, you know, I was going to be streaming on Sundays, but my husband also streams and Sunday is his day and we share a camera between us. So my streaming days will now always be Saturday at 11 and on a day like today where I'm doing a special double feature, the second one will begin about two o'clock. So without further ado, let's get in. And as always, the very first thing we're going to do is our background. And because he's the pink part of my rainbow, I'm gonna be using pink. And I'm using a half inch angle brush to do this. It won't matter so much right now which direction you're putting it in because it's all going to be covered over again later. I'm going to enjoy some neon paint after I get my base layer in to help really make this Technicolor villain super fun. As a kid, I was terrified of this villain. And as always, don't forget your sides and your top as well as you're going. You it's a bummer to come back and then realize that you've missed a whole side and then maybe you don't have that shade on your palette anymore. Especially if it's something that's a pre-mixed color that you're, or not a pre-mixed color that you've made yourself to get to the right shade. And if you don't have pink, as always, you can use something like um, red and white to get to pink. Or if you want to do an altogether different Technicolor background because you're not, you know, creating a villain rainbow that is awesome too black would work really well or a really vibrant purple um, just anything that you think would pop up against this lime green that he is unless of course you're painting him in the tan version where he's not rolling his you know technicolor dice that are super glow in the dark you know, it kind of depends because he's one of those fun villains that kind of get depicted in multiple lights. So that way you can kind of choose what kind of adventure you want for your painting. I like him this way. And I actually did a couple of years ago, the very last Mickey's Not So Scary Halloween party before everything went south in the world. I, uh, I had done a gender bend oogie boogie and I had done him in a lime green and it was this huge, massive labor of love. It was a high-low skirt, and it had 400, 400 hand-pounded grommets in it. And then I had them all, you know, where it was set to lace up. So it would look kind of simulating of the whole being stitched together. It was so awesome, and I was so proud of it. And I did sort of a pointed hate, um, capelet that went with it. It was such an amazing outfit and I'm so bummed that Mickey's Not So Scary Halloween Party is, doesn't seem to be a thing anymore because the parade was amazing, the fireworks were amazing. I can still cluck along to Henrietta's portion of the, of the parade where they do the barnyard part I, yes, I can even cluck along. It was just, there's nothing in this world like it. It was my favorite parade. Well, rephrase, the Main Street Electrical Parade was my favorite, but it's gone now too. I think I remember reading that it had gotten damaged and it's um, on its way to or back or from somewhere going to California. So shame on California for messing with my favorite parade and then shame on Disney for taking away my second favorite one. I mean, I know right now they're not really doing parades much in the way at all, but before even that they were without a nighttime parade and 
I don't know about you, but I don't like the three o'clock parade. It's too crowded. It's too obnoxious. It's in the middle of the day. It's when you want to be eating. Like, like what's up with that, Disney? What's up with that? The nighttime parades were always my favorite. I don't know who has Spectrum Magic right now, but it's not at Walt Disney World. I think I read that it went overseas. Maybe Disneyland Paris has it. If you know, comment in chat. And again, don't forget to neglect, uh, don't neglect your sides. You want to make sure that your your image is rolling off the side, unless of course you're choosing to have your have your work framed. In which case, you know, you do you. I don't do that because I don't like the expense of it, and I don't really like the look of it either. It makes it harder to gauge where something is going to belong or fit because then you have to match the idea of whatever you've used as your frame in whatever room it's in, instead of just plucking it off the wall and moving it. And now I'm gonna do my bottom, because my bottom side over here kind of comes off the edge. Now I'm going to rinse my brush and I'm going to go ahead and dry my background. you might see a little bit of your brush strokes we're going to go ahead and add a quick layer to clean that up so that way when we go on we'll be ready for adding our technicolor bugs because we're going to be doing that for kind of our background we're adding these bugs so I'm just going to swipe over real quick anywhere where I could see my brush strokes particularly well Again, it's gonna be covered a little bit, so it won't matter a whole lot, but I definitely don't want a bunch of streakiness for this. I want more of a solid base. And then again, over here on this side, just kind of going over anywhere where there was a little bit of streakiness. Now we've got some good coverage and I'm going to dry it one more time. draw over where our lines are in black before we put in our green because we don't want our lines to get lost because he is sort of a lumpy character. I 
And because for now I'm only doing this to put in my details, I'm using my smallest brush. And I'm gonna outline everywhere because it's, he's not just solid green. He's got like his stitching and whatnot. So any part where you'd see the black is maybe where a seam is. You know, something that's holding him together. I recommend you do this with a little bit of water on your brush so that way you don't wind up with wispy lines. You want nice, clean lines. And this part is sort of where his little point kind of folds over in front of his face, if you're wondering what this piece is. Because he's got, it's not included in this, in the image I used for reference, but there would normally be like a spider hanging down. And I think we'll include that at the end, because I do like that as a detail. And don't forget to do along your side from where his head kind of comes off the side of the canvas. Some other things you could include in his background would be like, um, if you're confident in your ability to draw dice, dice would make good sense in the, his background. It is one of my favorite scenes from this film is the scene where he's kind of gambling with Santa and they've got all of the the spinning roulette and everything else kind of in the background and then of course off to the side Sally's uh Sally's attempts at seduction by cutting off her leg to get his attention hilarious obviously would never recommend in real life but for an animated film hilarious now i'm going to come back to do the bottom part there because i'm not finished up here at the top this is kind of where his eye fold is from the angle that he's kind of looking at us. That's right, he's looking at you. Okay, and I'm gonna turn it so I can get better access to this area. And I guess since I've already turned it, I'll finish up here, just so I don't forget. As you do, sometimes. Right now, it kind of makes me think of this pop modern art piece I'd seen of the Cheshire Cat a couple of years ago. I absolutely love it. I do intend to recreate that at some point too. They had done it like this, where it was all like in hot pink, and then they had done the Cheshire Cat in like stripes of black and white. It was super vibrant and absolutely awesome.
And maybe if I had thought about it and I was doing a different kind of series than the one I had been working on, I might do this that way too. I might have done him, you know, grayed out. But because of the series I'm currently working on, it's part of a collection. It has to be cohesive. It has to make sense with my existing villain paintings. But who knows, maybe that'll be something that I'll do down the line. I got started in a painting many years ago when I was working for Connections Academy and we had done like this winter workshop like they did a, a thing for the staff every winter and every spring when the school year ended and that particular year we had done sort of a a paint and sip thing at a hotel and it was supposed to be like this cardinal sitting on a branch of ivy and it was the first paint along I had ever done. There was about 200 people in the room. You know, it was really far away. It was kind of hard to see everything that was going on. And just as I would now and just like I did when I was learning to paint using uh, paint tutorials, I would take their ideas and then make take something new out of it. Like instead of a cardinal, I had painted a blue a bluebird and it looked very sad and I didn't do holly because that was when I had stopped celebrating Christmas. I am Jewish. I converted many years ago. And so I had done him this little bluebird on kind of like a an empty tree, like it was a bunch of grayed out trees with like ice and whatnot hanging off of the off of the snow and it was such an empowering feeling to take their ideas and do my own thing with it that I wound up you know choosing to do a lot of paint and sip things and then after that you know went to YouTube and you know followed Angela Anderson and the art Sherpa and Ginger Cook, you know, trying to get some more knowledge, some more technique, some more, some more skill. And then even with theirs, you know, choosing to do my own things, just kind of following their direction for things like learning how to draw waves or, and then just taking that knowledge and making my own thing with it. So they're great places for learning technique to get you started. And then you kind of learn to do your own thing after you get comfortable with the rules. I had seen in, um, a quote recently where it was like, become an artist so you can learn the rules and then break them. Like that's what you do. That's what you do as an artist. You learn the rules simply to break them. And that is such an important kind of concept to take with you when you're painting. As long as it turns out in a way that you are happy, it doesn't matter if you followed me or someone else to the letter. As long as you're happy with it, it doesn't matter what it comes out like. No one's opinion matters but yours with your art. It should make you happy. Oh, thank you. Thank you. I designed it myself. I don't think my chat box works properly. So, oh no, I do see it there running. I'm, I'm very, very happy with it. I designed it yesterday and I was working on um, getting some new things. I'm gonna switch over to where it will hopefully stream live on YouTube and Twitch at the same time. That's the goal, that's the hope. We'll see if it works. I'm gonna try that um, as an experiment after I finish up today's live stream. Well, streams, because as soon as I'm done with Oogie Boogie, I'm gonna hop right in and start Hades. It's gonna be a very busy day. I am very much looking forward to having this collection finished 
and being able to start spending tomorrow to plan the series that I'm going to do for February. Right now there is a poll on Patreon for the different themes and I think right now Vintage Valentine is the one that's currently winning. So I'm going to probably spend tomorrow looking into different um, royalty free sources for Vintage Valentines and start getting those sketched out and planned and posted to Patreon for the traceables. I'm very excited about it. If you haven't had a chance, make sure you do pop over and do and vote in the poll. I did make the poll for February's theme um, non-Patreon exclusive for this time. I wanted to be able to get some feedback on what folks really wanted to see instead of what I just wanted to see. Because sometimes you just don't have the right feel of what, you know, the pulse of what people are wanting. And don't neglect your sides. I don't think I ever finished talking about the time I dressed as Oogie Boogie. Um, I got too into talking about the parades. So I had made this amazing outfit and I literally, I spent 16 hours pounding in, hand pounding in 400 grommets into this thing. It was beyond phenomenal. It was one of the most amazing things I had made up to that point. And that included my Maddie Hatter. My Maddie Hatter was awesome. All right, and we're gonna go ahead and fill in his mouth and his eyes black, since those are designed to be black. And I'm going to do that with a, um, a, a one round, because that makes that a little bit, a little bit easier. Because the space is still sort of small. We don't need to overdo it. I think the year I went as Oogie Boogie was probably one of my favorite years, although I did have a moment in the middle of the party where I had panicked because I had set down my phone um, when I had stopped to rearrange my shoes a little bit. I had worn like four inch uh, high heeled boots, <laughs> which normally wouldn't sound, you know, normally sounds absolutely crazy to wear into a theme park. But when you figure for most of the time you'd be, you know, sitting on a ride or enjoying food or something, it's really not so much a big deal as long as you know, pace yourself and take breaks and don't try to run everywhere. Not that it stopped me. <laughs> okay. Now we're gonna fill in his mouth. And I think when we are getting into our final layers, I might have some like bugs in his mouth too. I know it's not in my reference image, but it is just so oogie boogie to have some of like the purple worms sticking out of his mouth a little bit. Or I might just put a little bit of like, um, of the ultraviolet purple like lines or dots in there. So it kind of looks like bugs are in there. I don't know. We'll see when we get to that point. I did have, uh, did rearrange so that my hue lights when I'm ready to switch will be done over an ultraviolet so you can kind of get a feel for what it should look like under ultraviolet lighting. Okay, so I've got that filled in. I am gonna correct a few lines where I got a little bit, a little bit runny with my water just because I want those lines to be really, really deep and crisp. I don't want them lost. Oh, I didn't finish saying the story. I got so distracted. So I had gone, you know, I had sat down and I had left my phone out because I was downloading photos from PhotoPass, like you do. 
and I had set it down to rearrange my shoes and I completely left my phone on the bench. It was like going into Tomorrowland I, and so I sat down, you know, I was taking a break. I went into the the, Mon the Monsters Inc. Laugh Lab and I come out to take pictures from that because, you know, of course they hassled me like, you know, like, like they do at Monsters Inc. Laugh Lab. And I was realizing I couldn't, you know, take pictures because I could not find my phone. It was utterly baffling. So I go back and I follow myself, you know, and I alert a cast member. They tell me a phone was turned in down at Main Street. So I had to, you know, go down there, describe the case it was in. And, you know, I was just very so grateful that someone was, you know, people were that nice in the theme parks. They were that nice. I know as a kid, I once lost my uh, student ID because I, you know, I carried my wallet into the parks as a, as a ninth grader and I used to go every weekend with my friends. Uh, my friend Sarah and I, I would sleep over at her house. You know, I'd ride the bus home with her on Friday and we'd go into the parks on Saturday and Sunday. And then, you know, I'd ride the bus back to school with her on Monday morning. And so I didn't have my student ID and, you know, I didn't even realize that I had lost it at that point. And the theme parks mailed it back to me. I got it back in the mail that week. It was utterly baffling. Like, they are so nice. Their customer service when, you know, is actually really amazing. And for the most part, the guests are really nice too, for the most part. You know, you'll, you'll get your one-offs where they're not so very treasured. But it is what it is sometimes. There's always going to be some annoying people in the world that are not very nice. But on that particular day, I was very lucky. And I know exactly how lucky I was. But that was such, such an amazing night even with that, like, I really am super sad that there's not gonna be, I think, another Mickey's Not So Scary. I think they'll always kinda do another after hours event style instead of a full blown party. I mean, I loved the theming, from what I understood of the theming, I think they called it Boo Bash. You know, it was themed for Oogie Boogie, and obviously I'm a fan, big fan. But, I don't know, we'll have to see. We'll have to see what, how that goes and how that comes along. Don't neglect your sides. I'm finishing up my sides over here now. I'm loving how Technicolor this is coming out. I'm so thrilled already. A lot of the times I feel like with some paintings it stays in the ugly stage forever where you're not really sure if it's coming out right or and you have to like just kind of trust that creative process that it's coming out your way but right now I'm already I'm already in love like this is I love this coloration and this color concept I mean it kind of makes me think of Honey Dukes from Harry Potter very very candy and fluorescent but I think that's part of the reason why I really like this villain and this color concept I absolutely love these bright colors like they just speak to me. When I was a senior in high school, I actually painted my bedroom walls this shade of green and had um, beach towel curtains in this hot pink. Like this is not the first time this color combination has come together in my life. And I feel like I need something like this in my wardrobe. Maybe I'll plan something like that for spring. Some super Technicolor strawberries or something. I'll have to check and see when the Strawberry Festival is at uh, Plant City. Or other local strawberry picking things. Like I'm really, I really wanna do strawberry picking this year, I think. Like a you pick your own and then there's a festival and all that kind of fun thing. When you're filling in your green, it's okay if you cover your black just a little bit because you're going to be going back over that area and adding more shading and detail. We just put the black in there now so we would not lose it. I 
There we go. A lot of my darling friends are out at uh, the celebration for Harry Potter weekend. I hope they're staying warm. There isn't any amount of money alive that could convince me to go outside willingly in the weather right now. For anyone who's watching where it's always cold, you're used to it. I'm a Florida gal now. I may have been from Michigan, but I've lived in Florida for so long, I don't even count myself as a Michigander anymore. I'm a naturalized Floridian. And these temperatures were supposed to be getting down to 26 in my area tonight, and I am freaking out. I'm so glad that uh, at my bridal shower that Logan gifted me um, fleece Halloween pajamas because they are the warmest thing I have to sleep in. And I will probably be wearing them under all of my clothes when it gets to, when the temperature starts to uh, fall down again. I I I just I I don't like to be cold. I just don't have it in me. And my poor dogs, they're snuggled up in beds down at my feet right now. Cloud is keeping my toes warm because he doesn't like the cold either. He's a big wimp. I had to co I've had to coerce him all week to go outside to go to the bathroom. He does not want to do it. Puggle is not about that cold life. Last weekend, I got gifted a ton of scrap fabric, so hopefully I'll be able to make a lot of progress on my scrap quilt. I was fortunate enough that both Sherry and Julie had fabric for me, so I have literally like four or five boxes of fabric that I can't even bring into my house because there is no room for it to go. I know I just organized my craft room and Paul's already after me because as soon as I got it cleaned up and cleared out, there's more of it. And as uh, Logan was telling me this morning, that's sort of just the way that crafting goes. As soon as you get a spot cleared out, it gets all taken up and filled in again. It's just the way of the crafter, especially if you're a thrift crafter like I am, where you save and use everything. Because the minute you buy anything, you have it until you're down to the very last of it. Because you don't like to see waste. I'm so excited to be doing this as a UV painting. I've only done a few of them, but they're always really super successful. I had done one entire, like an abstract one, entirely in UV painting. It took hours to dry because the UV painting I was using at the time was sort of super heavy and it took forever, like between layers, to be able to add additional color or go on again. But I am using, will be using at least when I switch over to the UV paint, just regular like neon craft paint. It will work fine since I'm using this kind of paint underneath. I would not recommend painting directly on your canvas with the neon like folk art paint just because the paint is really thin and really translucent and you won't get a lot of color. So it's one of those things where you want to put a base layer of your color in first and then come in afterwards to add that on top just so that way your color is true and vibrant and consistent, but then you still have that fun, like neon UV light glow. Here pretty soon I'm gonna to have to switch over to using a smaller detail brush because this is getting a little harder to work with. Yes, I love Oogie Boogie. Oogie Boogie is so exciting. I'm so glad to be doing this. Like these colors, I'm all about these colors. I really want to go strawberry picking now. Like, I, well, not right now because it is way too cold, but yes, I love this color combination. 
definitely want to plan some like strawberry picking. I, I need like a dress with these colors in my life. I absolutely just need it. I bet the wind has been crazy. I actually had to leave my house this morning to get some neon paint for this painting. And I was grateful that it was still at least like 40 degrees when I went out, but I I would not want to go outside now. I'm, I'm planning to hibernate the rest of the day. It's part of the reason um, in between Paul wanting to stream tomorrow that I switched my stream schedule to Saturday because I have no desire to leave my house. Absolutely none. So I'm gonna be doing Hades as soon as I'm done here with Oogie Boogie. Like this is gonna be a long stream day just to avoid going outside, which is terrible because my laundry is outside and I have a load that's done that's been living in my dryer the last three days because I have not wanted to go outside to bring it in. So outside is now where it lives until like Wednesday. <laughs> so that's exciting. I, I am not about, not about the cold. I'm very much looking forward to a time, sometime ever where my laundry is not outside anymore. It was bad enough at my old house when the addition wasn't climate controlled. I mean, it was in a way, but not directly. There were no vents over there. But having to actually go outside to do my laundry is brutal. Especially when the temperatures are like this. It definitely makes me not want to do laundry. And I already don't want to do laundry enough. Like it's, I hate touching the dry fabric. Very textural person. Maybe I can convince Paul to bring it in when he comes back from the guitar store today. So that way we can have clothes. <laughs> All right, I'm going to flip this upside down just to make this side a little easier for me to get at. And so I don't stick my wrist down in my paint as I tend to do. Although I've been pretty good. I've only got a little bit on my arm so far. It reminds me of that scene in Little Women where the, um, the German professor, you know, pronounces that he knows why Joe is a writer because he looks at her hands and it's covered with ink. Well, the same is true for painters. <laughs> you know they're a painter because their hands will be covered in paint. Or at least have smidges of it or their clothes might have some of it, like depending on what kind of medium and whatnot that they're working with there will be signs. You will know whether it's in their fingernails or on their skin or on their clothes, maybe in their hair. I've got paint in my hair before. I don't want to talk about that though. That was not a good time to get out. <laughs> Although speaking of hair, I did try this henna hair dye this week. It was, um, I had gotten it at Target. It was like naturally bright, I think was the brand. And while it was a little bit of a, you know, more messy of a process to put on and you have to wear it for like four, it recommends four hours. I did three because I didn't want to stay awake any longer. Um, it worked out quite well. Like I said, it was a bit of a messy process, but the color is great. And there was absolutely like the only plastic that was even remotely involved was just the tube. Uh, the box was biodegradable. You didn't, you know, I didn't wear gloves to put it on. I put it on with a tint brush and I just kind of poured the mixture into a glass bowl. So it was very zero waste in that respect, or very close, to, near to zero waste. Certainly less than traditional hair dye. And it was all plant-based. And the reason I was thinking about switching to henna hair dye was because... I wanted something that would allow me to have red hair and it would stay longer without having to wash it in my hair all the time and ruin my pillows and, you know, whatnot from, you know, my hair being wet after, you know, shampooing it or conditioning it with the, 
the color additives. And the color continued to develop for like 48 hours afterwards, and it's a very nice red now. I'm very happy with it. Uh, but I'll have to wait and see how well the color maintains. Because it's henna, it's supposed to be, it's supposed to last longer, like it's supposed to stay longer. So I'm hoping that will wind up being true. But so far, I'm quite happy with it. We'll have to see. I'll report back in like a month or two and we'll see how I feel about it then. Or how easy it is to add more on top of it or what that process even looks like. We'll see. I'm looking forward to kind of um, choosing out the themes for next month. I, I had seen that Vintage Valentine's was winning in the Patreon poll for the theme. So that's gonna be fun. I'm hoping that tomorrow to have up um, my schedule for that and have all of my reference images collected and, and uh, traceables made. And maybe even like pre-plan out my announcements and my thumbnail clips. Oh, it wouldn't let you, you do have to have a Patreon account. I mean, you, um, you have to create one, but you don't have to be a member of my Patreon. You don't have to subscribe to vote. Um, Cause I know I've, I've had a couple of votes and I currently don't have any subscribers, but uh, I'll touch base with you later about it and see if I can't help you do that. So I definitely want, you know, I want input on what what is most wanted to be seen. Out of curiosity, what would you have picked? Just so I can kind of keep an idea, even if, you know, you, we can't figure it out. I'll have an unofficial, unofficial vote as well. Fair enough, fair enough. There were like seven options, I think, because I really wanted like a wide net. The only ones that had any votes up to this point were vintage Valentine and vintage sewing patterns. But I think I also put, um, and I'm sure I put Harry Potter, I'm sure I put, um, Pokemon. I'm sure I put like ocean scenes. I'm sure I put what else would I have thought of putting? Oh, I know at minimum I would have included those as well. Starting to kind of think of spring. I think maybe I had landscapes or florals or something along those lines as well. But I did a lot of florals last year. I'm, I'm okay with taking a break on florals. And I might do some like extra streams that are not part of that theme just because I think I want to do a really fun like Queen of Hearts Glad Tidings Valentine's Day kind of deal too. I might stream that one special like on Valentine's Day just because I think that would be fun. We don't tend to do much in the way of Valentine's Day at our house. Um, it's just not an important holiday for us. So I know he won't mind if I stream. We're not big on doing like the cards or anything like that. Just cause every day should be a good day for your spouse or your partner. There shouldn't have to be, you know, one designated day a year where you're super nice to your spouse. That should be an all time thing for everybody, male, female, otherwise. Always treat your partner with love and respect. And if you find you can't, definitely means you probably need a, a different partner if you're finding you can't do that. And that might be like some people's like, quote, come to Jesus moment, if they're finding that it's hard to be respectful to their spouse. All right, and I might have to switch over to a slightly smaller detail brush 
just to get into these corners. Just because he's got a lot of lines coming up off on his mouth and I don't really want to cover them up any more than I strictly have to. Like I want to keep them mostly intact. It would just make it easier down the line. Did you hear that um, Dave's tournament was canceled? I'm guessing because of the either the wind, maybe? Maybe it was the wind. I'm sure it wasn't like a weathered thing. I'm sure it was more of the wind than the temperature, just because I think that they've done tournaments in much colder weather before. It was because of the wind? No, that would make sense. It, I would think that'd be dangerous to kind of do that with all of the wind they were having. And I'm gonna flip it this way now to get over here just so I can get to it without, again, getting my hands down in the paint. I've been pretty fortunate so far with only a little bit of pink on my wrist and I kind of want to keep that streak going. Cloud has begun a new thing where he cries all day when I'm gone now. So that's been a super annoying thing for Paul. All day he cries for me. I have, like, he's the best fan club ever. <laughs> or most persistent fan club ever, at least. I had an unusual question be asked of me yesterday. Someone asked me if I had ever ridden a roller coaster when it was 30 degrees, and the answer is yes. The answer is yes, but I do not recommend it, unless you can wear a hoodie to protect your ears. Because the hats will fly off every time. That was, um, the time I had done that was, I think it was for my brother's fifth heavenly anniversary. We had gone into the parks and it was the same weekend as the, uh, the marathon weekend going on at Disney. And they had canceled the race because of how wet and thunderstormy and cold it was. And it, it takes a lot for Disney to cancel marathon weekend because that's a lot of refunds to issue. It's a, it's a lot of work for Disney. It's very expensive. Yes, yes. Gloves too, but if you're wearing a hoodie, you can just tuck your hands in, in the hoodie pocket. That's how, uh, that's how I would do it anyway. Keep your hands good. I lost my train of thought. Oh, and um, I had gone, I had made the grave mistake, the very grave mistake of riding Splash Mountain on that day. It was 31 degrees, it was raining, <laughs> my feet were freezing, they had soaked through. I hate wearing sneakers, but it was so cold that I still had to wear sneakers in the parks. And that, that killed me, like it absolutely killed me to wear sneakers. And my toes were freezing. We actually bought shoes at Disney, and I don't know if you've ever had to do that, but it is expensive to have to buy shoes at Disney. You never wanna to have to do that. The choices are always literally one of two things and whether or not you can even find your size is astronomical. So you may wind up with super uncomfortable feet all day from you know wearing new shoes in a theme park that may or may not fit and you may or may not have socks to wear with them. And then after that, we had left Magic Kingdom. Oh, there we did, I got orange, I got green on my hand. I did it, I knew I was gonna. We had gone to um, Hollywood Studios 
and we rode Rock and Roller Coaster. So not only did I get soaking wet on Splash Mountain, but compounded the injury by riding one of the faster ones that they have at Disney. I imagine it felt like very like I haven't I didn't I haven't done this while Pandora has been open. But I imagine that it would have been like absolutely freezing to go in and be waiting like the three hours it sometimes is to go into um I lost the name of it. The the one that feels like a simulation ride where you're sitting on it and you're riding the riding the flying things. I know I feel like a super loser that I can't remember the name right now, but it happens. I remember the name of the people, the people are the Navi, but I cannot remember the name of the ride. Maybe it was just like Flight of Pandora or no, I think I'm thinking of the the water ride, the water the little water boat thing. I think is Passage of of Navi or something along those lines, but it was it was cool. <laughs> All right, and we're almost done adding our base layer in. And then I will let it dry and I will do any touch up layers, making sure I smooth out any lines. And then we will start adding in our details. And I will switch my lighting after I get my base layer totally solid over to uh, ultraviolet so that we can kind of see the glowing as it's happening. And I'm gonna dry it now. my black lines and anywhere where I'm seeing streakiness on my green. I need to add a little more green to my palette. I'm going to use my one round for this just because I'm kind of just touching up an area. I want to smooth out any streakiness for this. We really want a good solid base because you want all of the details to be in the ultraviolet color. We don't really we don't really want this to be the focal point. We want that super bright fluorescent colors to be the focal point. And when you're trying to fill in color, it's definitely a great tool to go in the opposing direction that you put your first layer in. So because I did this one going this way, I'm going to put in this layer going this way to help smooth out any, any lining that I'm seeing. And it's okay if your paint is a little thick, because like I said, we're going for a lot of texture here. He's made out of a canvas bag, literally a canvas bag. So texture is 100% expected. There we go. I was saying earlier that I was missing, you know, Mickey's not so scary Halloween party. But I think the thing I miss the most is the candy cane, or not candy cane, the candy corn ice cream. Like the specialty ice cream they always had for the event. That was my favorite. And, you know, we had done a thing at like Atwood Farms where they had um, an, like a vendor of sorts there. I mean, they were mostly trying to peddle hot dogs and that kind of thing, but they did have candy corn ice cream and it was good, but it wasn't the same. It wasn't the same. There's just no replacing Halloween at Disney. 
although I did have a pretty spectacular Halloween this last year. That was amazing. Such a great time. And everything and everyone was so pretty. For those that don't know, I got married on Halloween, and this last year I had a small first wedding anniversary party, a Halloween Ever After, and it was a great time. Like, I was so happy. I think I, think I only listened to that nine hours of music that was in my playlist, I don't know, for a whole year and nothing else, with the exception of a little bit of, of the Hamilton soundtrack. Just a little bit. I did, I did uh, pop in some Lin-Manuel. I do need to watch the new Encanto because I heard that the music in that is phenomenal. And I've been seeing a lot of people's Disney bounds on Instagram. And I'm super excited that they put in like a super muscly woman just because they exist. They exist, and I'm glad that Disney acknowledged that they exist. I'm not one of them. I'm weak as weak. I'm beyond weak. But, you know, I really like to see that inclusion continue. That, you know, not every girl is a girly girl, and that's okay. I mean, we do have Brave, and she's still in some ways kind of girly, but not, not super truly you know, archery and all of that, but she still is like, you know, in the shape of what you'd expect for a Disney princess. Maybe a little, uh, maybe a little, because it's a Pixar film, they drew her in a slightly different style than a traditional princess, but I don't know. I dig it. I, d I dig a lady with muscles. That's cool. I don't have the patience, the tolerance to do it for myself, but I do think that's really, that's really awesome. I think I had seen that her name was Louisa, maybe, or Louise, something along those lines. I'm not totally sure, but I'll have to, I'll have to stream it and watch it because that sounds really awesome. Maybe at some point I'll do like a minimalist Disney princess series. I don't think I made that as an option for my poll, but at some point, maybe for spring, I will do that. Maybe March, we'll see. I'll put it up there in the poll at some point. And I've got a hankering to paint the stretching portraits from the Haunted Mansion. God, I wanna do that, it'd be so awesome. and do them in like the long style so that we can see all of like the danger and, and whatnot at the bottom like they do as the room is stretching. I love that ride. It used to terrify me as a child, like beyond terrify me. I would scream the whole way through the queue. And that was before it was an interactive queue. So there wasn't much to it. But I would scream because I knew I was going in the dark and it was supposed to be, quote, a haunted house and there were ghosts. And I was, I was a scaredy cat. I was a real scaredy cat as a kid. I, um, this movie came out when I was pretty young and when I was four, it used to terrify me. Like, only the scene with Oogie Boogie. Like, Oogie Boogie scared me to death as a small child. And now he's one of my favorite villains. And I don't even like bugs. I'm not even sure why I like this villain so much. Maybe it's just because he's so colorful. I mean, that could be it. But I do. I just love this villain. I might not sell this one. I think I might keep this one for me. Oh, who am I kidding? I'll probably post it. And then if it sells, I'll just paint it bigger for myself. We'll see. I 
I am a member of Gertie's Patreon and she releases like a free pattern every month. I am very much looking forward to seeing what her pattern is going to be for February. It's been sort of my mission, well I've decided that it was my mission, rephrase, that I'm going to paint all, or not paint, I'm going to sew all of her projects that she comes out with this year all of them. It doesn't matter if it's not my style, I will make it work. That's part of kind of like um, a bit of a test for myself to kind of build out my sewing repertoire a little more, get more comfortable with the different things, different skill sets. I've, I did a lot of amazing projects last year but I definitely want to do more. I want to feel super empowered by the things that I'm by the things that I'm sewing. I have felt really great. I always feel the prettiest when I'm wearing something that I've made myself. And a lot of that might be because there's um, it's it's made to fit me, so I feel good wearing it, and you know. If I don't like the color, I have no one to blame but me since I'm the one who chose it. So there's a little more accountability and a little more thought process to the way in which I like shop for fabric when I do buy it. A lot of it is upcycled from like bed sheets and, and whatnot, but I do like if I am going to purchase fabric to look at the quality of it, you know, make sure it feels nice against my skin, and then really like building it from the ground up. Everything about it has to be exactly right. Something that's gonna stand the test of time, that is easy to alter, you know, or, you know, if I gain, if I change sizes, you know, being able to make that change and feel good about it. And now I'm gonna to touch up down here. It's definitely important to feel good about the clothes that you're wearing. And that, I mean, that goes for anything that you buy at the store too. Like you're gonna love it most in the store. So if you don't absolutely love it at the store, you're never gonna wear it when you bring it home. And then ultimately it either winds up in the trash, which means in the landfill or um, back at, the, at a, some kind of a thrift store and I definitely want to see less of that happening for me. I definitely want to be more thoughtful in how I select things. It was very, you know, a good challenge for me last year to not purchase any clothes or buy, buy fabric. You know, choosing to only use upcycled materials last year for my villain projects was, was definitely like an eye-opening experience for me and imparted a, a degree of challenge that I, I can see why, how it, why and how it's so difficult to make good and meaningful choices about your wardrobes. This year I'm kind of wanting to focus on like building small capsule wardrobes, pieces that are very interchangeable, that all are meant to, to go together, and doing that in like a seasonal color scheme, and then putting the colors that are not in season, like it's not time for that, down in a little bin under my bed. I mean, I've got a very small closet, so getting all of my clothes to fit is just never going to happen. Okay, so I've got my base layer in, and I'm going to touch up my black lines. And I'm going to use my small detail brush, and I'm going to start with where I just recently just felt myself paint over my line because it bothers me that I painted over my line. There. And again, it would probably help to have a little water on your brush to help your line move kind of fluid. And we're just recreating that crispness of the line. Just making sure it doesn't get lost because this is gonna anchor us, especially with all of our neon colors. The black is gonna ground it and create that dividing line.
and I'm just kind of going around the areas. I'm not looking to reshade the center. I'm just sharpening up my lines. Can't get to that area without putting my paint, my hand in my paint. So I'm going to turn my canvas and work down here a little bit. Oop, I need a little bit of water on my brush. There we go. And I'm going to dry my canvas before I go any further because I don't want to put my hands in the middle of that green paint. My dog is uh, is dreaming. She's yipping in her sleep right now. You get that. You get that cat, Luna. You get that cat. Depending on what you're wanting your painting to look like, if you didn't want to go all the way and add all the extra detail that I like to do. Once you do this part in the theory, you could call your painting done. But definitely stick around if you are wanting something a little more insane, a little more crazy, a little more vibrant. done with the base layer. There we go. When you're painting and you're running into a situation where you can't think of a way to get at your, your spot without dipping your hands in your paint, that always just means it's a time to a stop and dry your, dry your canvas before continuing. And there's absolutely no shame in needing to dry it frequently.
All right, so we've got our base layer in. In theory, at this point, you could call yourself totally done. You could maybe put some stripes or whatever in your background and you could have a pop modern art piece, just like this. But we're not gonna do that. At this point, I'm gonna switch my lights over. Oop, hold on a second. I've got something that needs my attention real quick. I will be right back. Thank you for bearing with me. All right, so I'm gonna switch my lights over now. And I like to use the Philips Hue bulbs for this, but if you've got any kind of black light, it would really help just to be able to kind of see what's going on. And I'm gonna pop this over. You know, I mean, it probably should help, um, should have helped kind of see what's going on. And for my neon paints, I'm not using anything special. I am just using Folk Art Neon. And I picked it up in a few colors just to have some variety. And you'll notice the difference kind of between oh, the two shades. This brighter pink is the fluorescent and the upper pink is the pink that was I used in my background. Just so you can kind of see a little bit of what it looks like, the color difference looks like on the palette. And to start with, we're just going to do a bunch of repetition lines kind of going up this angle in our Technicolor pink. Remember, we're gonna go over this with bugs too, it's fluorescent bugs. So you don't feel like it has to be super uniform. In fact, it shouldn't be. You definitely want it to feel kind of unplanned, spontaneous dots. You don't want it to, you don't want to do this in a straight line. You want, you definitely want it to feel like organic. And while I'm aware it sounds crazy for anything to be organic that is Technicolor, but you, you don't want it to look overly planned. It just won't give you the effect that you're going for. You could ask why I didn't do the whole background like this, but I really wanted this to pop and it won't it won't pop as it should if the whole thing is done in this bright color. It will provide more texture and more interest as an accent, even if overused like this.
And don't forget your top. I might go back through some of my other vellum ones I've done and maybe add some of this UV paint, like a, a small layer of it on some small details, just because I think it would be fun. I think it would add a little bit of interesting cohesion so that way Oogie doesn't stand out quite so much. I was noticing earlier that most of the that I had gotten kind of lucky with the way I had decided to, to do my portraits, that the first few I did were all facing, you know, from the left to the right, and then I did a couple that were center facing, and then all the ones that I'm doing now are sort of, you know, coming from this way and looking down over this way, so that if they're all hung together, it's gonna look so cool. It's gonna look like I did it intentionally, and I swear I did not. It was an absolute accident. When I did the lady villains, most of them were kind of facing head on with the exception of a few. But for whatever reason, the male villains have really big noses and Disney really likes to play up that kind of idea of, these, of this like, large nose. So it definitely made it really hard to not find, to find reference images where they weren't facing from the side. So it kind of just went with it. And it really worked out in my favor, I think. I think that will make it look really nice together. And when I'm done with Hades later, I'll kind of uh, run all of them kind of beside each other so you can see what they look like in comparison to one another. And then you can tell me which one you think looks the best. And I did do a little bit different with the villain, the male villains than I did the females because when I did the ladies, I never really intended for them to be uh, displayed together. So they were all done in different sizes. But when I did the males, I definitely decided I wanted to stick with the same size for all of them. So that way they would hang nicer together if they were purchased that way. When I did the ladies, almost all of them except for one was purchased by one person. I'm kind of curious to see how they used it in their home or if they gave them away or God, if they lit them on fire, <laughs> who knows? I couldn't honestly not tell you. I don't have a single idea. I only know that I sent them out to California. But I think I want to redo that series again for myself because I really did love that. It was such a great thing. And maybe I'll do go back and do like all of the lady villains and not just like, you know, my rainbow ones. Maybe I'll be happier with Taka the second time around. That was my least favorite. And that might be because it was the least humanoid. It was the most difficult to do, but there just aren't a lot of like female orange villains. <laughs> that are like humanoid maybe i'll go back and do like some that are some like animal ones but i've been trying to stick with ones that mostly have like a human type face or something along those lines it was a little harder with the males to do that just because i feel like the best you know male villains are all animals like scar and Shere khan and I even really like Prince John. He's sort of a wimpy villain, but he's just so much fun. Like, a villain that sucks his thumb. How funny is that? All right, so we've got our layer, our beginning layer for that in. And I think I might try switching off my, my light over here, just so you can kind of see what this is looking like a little better. Like, that's kind of what it's looking like without light kind of overplaying it. But I'll flip it back on for while I'm working, but I kind of wanted you to see where it's at right now. Okay, 
And now we are going to start putting in our green, our neon green. I'm going to do the same thing. I'm using my smallest detail brush to put these lines in and I'm going to be following the lines of the shape of his face. Oop, I just put my hands in the paint. Let me smooth that line out a little bit. There we go. Ooh. There we go. When your paint is dry, you can usually just kind of wipe paint away. If it wasn't, you'd have to dry it and then paint over it to correct mistakes. But if you get a little bit of wet paint on it on a layer of paint where it's already dry underneath, you can usually just kind of wipe it away. And my craft paint will take longer to dry this cur this current UV paint that I'm using. It will not dry as fast. And to that end, I think I will go ahead and not risk it and do a little drying. completely dry but maybe I've got it dry enough to work with. So I'm going to turn it upside down and I'm going to start from up here. And I'm going to do my bottom side first so that way when I flip it over it has the most amount of time to dry. I'll do my side here really quick too. Okay, so having done my, my bottom and my side, I'm going to head and get started. Now I'm going to follow along his shoulder line first. And then start to bridge my way down going following this line. Because that's sort of the movement of his, of, of his body at that point. And over here, I'm going to follow along these lines and I'm going to make sure that they kind of come down to like this point, like this line is being extended down because this is sort of the way his body is shaped. He's coming down to that. So I'm going to slowly like get my angles kind of coming down into the same direction. And don't be afraid to let your paint be really thick here when doing these lines because it's going to provide more vibrancy if you do. A couple of the other UV paintings that I've done are, I was commissioned to make a banana taking a selfie based on like 
meme culture, I'm guessing, but it was very weird and it was three foot by four foot. It was a massive painting, utterly massive. And then I've done a sunflower as a gift for my niece and it was UV painting. She's all about the sunflowers. Kind of curious what she's gonna want to do for her birthday this year. What exciting new adventure we're gonna have. Last year we did a science birthday and that was a lot of fun. She is blessed to have a lot of interests. I can't believe how big she already is. And the same for this one, we're going to be angling down towards the center, following these kind of lines that we painted in black as our guideline. And it's, and it's kind of telling us the story of where the folds are in his canvas sack. And then for this one, well, it looks like I missed a little bit of a line there when I was touching up my black, so I might rinse off real quick and correct that. Because that does not look as, as dark as it should. Fix that real quick. There we go. Now back to our green. And you'll kind of see that we've got some like deviating lines there. Like it's starting to tell us to go in that direction. So you'll kind of go on either side until you meet in the middle. So that way you kind of still tell the story of the way that that is being shaped. And the same for here. Kind of working your way around kind of helps you follow the line more effectively. Now, if I'm work if you're working like this like I am, it'd be a good idea to anchor your elbow down in front of your painting so that way you don't put your hand down in your in your pink paint or whatever color you chose to do for your background cuz it will still be wet. And we're going to do these kind of lines coming up around here first couple of base lines for his mouth because you see we've got some conflicting lines for his nose so for this we will do our nose lines only on the upper part because we're kind of indicating that the story of his nose is right here, not kind of going all the way. 
And we'll do one layer down here. And then we'll fill in the rest of this space kind of going down around for the mouth. Because it's more important that we're telling that story where the stitches are. And then when you get down over here, you'll have to kind of follow up to the eye. And then at that point, we'll start following around this shape here. And then all of our lines from this point will be going kind of down in that way. And we'll tell the kind of the same story over here. We're telling the story about this eyebrow arch and it would have continued sort of like right there. So we're going to use that as our line of demarcation of sorts where that kind of style ends. You're going to go ahead and fill in the lines going kind of down to the center. Now at this point it would probably be easier to flip it. And then continue on. Just make sure to rest your elbow down. You don't want to put your, your wrist on your painting. And we're going to continue to kind of tell the story of this eyebrow arch going down to the center. Then we've got kind of another arch here. So now we're going to kind of tell its story. This, this fold of this canvas that is making up the top of his head because it kind of comes up over the top and kind of points down. So we're going to tell that story now. Of this kind of bag, this pointy hat of sorts. And then this side we're going to continue to go down and marry it down into the middle because it's still kind of being pulled up around up over his head. And then we've kind of got this story happening too, of this fold here. So we're going to follow this line down to fill that in. And then kind of continuing this way, just a little. And then we're going to start kind of letting it angle out because now it's gonna be kind of pointing up to catch the top and be to then move over. And then for this part, it's gonna follow the black line going down because it's got a new point. This is its point. It's all kind of stemming from that that piece. All right, and I'm going to rinse off my brush and I'm going to flip off my light for a second so you can kind of see what it's looking like right now. This is where we are at. It looks really cool, right? So awesome. So pleased with how this is coming out. So I'm going to flip my light back on. And I think for where his black is, I'm going to use a little bit of blue. It 
it shouldn't be like hyper visible when not under black lighting so it won't impact the way the color is viewed but I think that will add a little extra when it's when it's uh, under UV light so again I'm going to rest my elbow down in front anchoring it down so that way I don't stick my hand down in my paint And I'm just going to do a couple of dashes in his mouth and his eyes. And I'm going to see how I feel about it and then decide if I want to do more or if I want to outline or dash the black. But for now, I'm just going to see how I feel about it. So I've got a layer in. And I'm gonna turn off the light real quick. Oh yeah, I like it. Cause it kind of looks almost kind of like that indigo that looks like the snakes in his mouth. So I think I'm gonna continue that. Anywhere where I've got the black, I'm gonna also add this, this dash of blue. And for his eyes, I'm gonna be following the shape of the hole. I'm gonna take a second to turn it off, see how I feel. I don't think I'll do the outline. I think I wanna leave the outline just flat black because I think that provides more like division of the color. And now I'm gonna dry it a little bit. switch off my light for when, when I'm going to do next because I think I'm going to use some of the yellow over the green areas to add a little more vibrancy and contrast. So I'm going to flip off my light so that way you can really see what I'm doing. I'm just doing this in little dots over top of the green. Do you see what I'm doing over there in the corner? I'm just adding a little more variety, a little more movement. And the yellow doesn't take away from the green here because they're right beside each other on the color wheel and his green is so like phosphorus that the yellow kind of makes it look almost more mountain dewy even more green so it lends a lot of extra to what we're working on 
So I'm gonna keep the lights like this while I'm working on this part. And I could use my dotting tool, but I'm really wanting very irregular kind of dot shapes here. And I don't want to risk um, messing up my underpainting since my green is still technically wet. It does take a, a fair amount of time to dry properly. And if I was to push down really hard using the metal tool that I usually do for this, it would smear my paint. So because the brush is a lot lighter and a lot more feather light to the touch, it's not gonna disturb my underpainting while I'm putting these dots on. It would just, you know, work on top of it. And if you're wondering what this is looking like while it's dry, I'll flip it over for a second. You see it's not really, it's not changing too much of what's going on here, it's just adding some texture. And this part will take a long time. We will, we will be at this a little bit. Just like when we do any of my other villain paintings, this is always the longest part. Filling in all of the tremendous detail that makes it super pop and super interesting. And I guess in theory, you could have stopped right before this point and again, been pretty happy with your painting. But this is just that extra layer of fizzazz, that extra layer of oomph, that, that final sinister detail that makes it all worth it. And I'll come back and do the underside of this afterwards. I don't really want to do that right now. But, you know, I will say don't forget to do the underside of your painting when you're finished. I still cannot. I'm so excited to do like a vintage Valentine's theme. That's gonna be so awesome. I'm kind of glad that one won, although I don't know if anyone will wanna see that all month long when Valentine's Day is only halfway through the month, but we'll see. Maybe it'll just be like hearts themed or just kind of romancy themed. Rather than specifically Valentine's Day all month long. We'll stay in the same vein of the theme, but we'll we'll vary it up a little bit. And we're still kind of just planting our dots in place and creating this texture. It is looking magnificent. I'm very pleased with how this is coming out. And if at some point you do like I just did there and it kind of runs away from you a little bit, you can use like the other end of your brush to kind of smear it out so that way it's not quite so clumpy. And you can always correct it with a little bit of non-neon paint after the fact if you've got some lumps that kind of go, uh, push themselves together too much. As you can see, it happens to me a fair bit. <laughs> I think I'm trying to get too much paint on my brush is the problem. Okay. I'm 
I'm going to go over here now. So I think I'm going to flip it over to do that side just to help protect the painting a little bit against my wrist. Need to put some more paint on my palette. And again, this is just some, some folk art neon craft paint. It's nothing super special. This is not the glow in the dark ones because the glow in the dark folk art paint is really um, color thin. It doesn't have as much pigment as the neon. I mean, granted, the glow in the dark only needs to be activated by light for a period to be able to glow. It wouldn't have to be sustained under black lighting, but the effect is not always worth it. It takes a lot more to get to this level of vividness using the glow in the dark paint as opposed to the neon ultraviolet paint. Just my two cents on that. You can do it, but it will definitely take you longer to get to the same place. And it might look a bit more messy rather than strategically textured. And I do think maybe I'll add some dice in here in the background and not just the bugs. I'm feeling like like I'm really loving this super Technicolor vividness. It is looking so awesome. I'm so happy with this. I'm not even done and I'm already thinking this might be my favorite piece that I've ever made. I do have some standard glow in the dark paint that I might break out for something in the eyes and the mouth maybe because it's just plain white. Just so that way if there's no UV lighting and it's dark it has some like sinister glow about it. But I think I will only do that in a small area just because I, like I said it takes a lot to get to the same effects. Oh yeah, that is so amazing. Oh my gosh, I can't believe how amazing this is looking. Probably got another 20 minutes of the yellow dots. Before I'm finished and can move on with the background. I think I've got enough control. I'm using the side of my easel to keep my my hand from touching my painting to be able to kind of do over in this corner a little bit before going back up and finishing up that direction.
Oh yeah, I think I'm definitely gonna go back over and touch up some of my other paintings to add just a little bit of UV on it. This is so much fun. I have a all in the golden afternoon Alice painting up in my kitchen that was done entirely in UV paint. And it is a technical marvel, absolutely marvelous. Last night we had an immense craving for Taco Bell and so I drove in the cold to Taco Bell last night and it was like 15 minutes up the road. It was not a small short drive for me, at least not what I think of as a short drive anymore. Now that I only work like a mile from my house, anything that's more than like six miles is almost too much of a hassle to drive to now. I have become so lazy with that. Like, the closest Target is about 10 minutes up the street, and I still don't like going just because of how long, how much longer it takes to get up there. Like, I have to have a real reason to be, to be over that way. Like, I need to have to, go, like, go to PetSmart or Joann's and Michael's or Best Buy or something to, to make the drive out. Like, I won't go if I only need one of those things. I have to need to go to more than one of those stores to make me go. Otherwise, I will wait or try to make do with something at Walmart since that's just a few minutes up the road from me. Or if it, you know, isn't time constrained, I'll probably just pick something on Amazon to avoid driving out there. What is the longest you've ever driven for work? I have driven an hour and 15 minutes to go to work for almost a year and two months until November 1st when I started at my new job and I was really excited to be working so close to home. I have even managed well, on warmer days to bike to work, but I won't bike to work if the temperature is under 60 degrees just because the wind from when you're riding your bicycle makes it feel that much colder. and. As we've already discovered, I am a weather wimp. I do not like to be cold. I'm sort of like my puggle here. He likes to only be warm. I'm kind of jealous of him right now because he's snuggled under a blanket and I can't really do that and paint at the same time. But we've made it kind of nice and warm in here so I'm, I'm not too cold and I've got two pair of socks on my toes so that way I don't get sick because I do not want to have any kind of sniffle or sneeze or cough going on. I don't want anyone looking at me twice just because the weather is bad. All right, now we've just kind of got the top of his head and his shoulder to go. Maybe at some point I'll paint the tiki birds too. Like maybe I'll go through and kind of think about all the different rides at Disney that use black lighting, like, you know, Flight to Neverland and portions of It's a Small World too. Maybe that could be fun, like doing a, a series that is based on like attractions at the Magic Kingdom or something. Maybe even just Pandora, although I don't know if there's enough interest in Avatar right now. Although I did hear that there's going to be another film coming out soon. I don't remember when they said that was happening or even if it was going to be directed by the same person. Cameron something or other I think it was. I, I don't really remember. I'm not good about remembering names especially as it pertains to celebrities. I usually can remember the character they play if it left an impact but other than that I usually don't know their names. Like I loved, I loved Alice from Twilight, but to this day, I don't think I could tell you what the actress's name is, even though I loved her performance. Kind of 
of got away from me a little bit there. Let me pick some of it up. There. Like, I think I only know Julie Kendrick's name because, you know, even though her character wasn't a big deal, because she went on to be kind of a big deal in other films. And she sings. And I usually remember the artists that sing. I'm actually kind of hoping that Hugh Jackman does more musicals. I absolutely loved The Greatest Showman. Absolutely loved that. I love that movie so much. And uh, Wolverine and X-Men is that Hugh Jackman is what got me into superheroes in the first place. The first superhero movies I ever loved were the X-Men movies. Like I religiously watched them over and over again when they came out. And I was, I think I saw the, the newest ones all at midnight releases. I am a um, super fan for the X-Men. I grew to like the other heroes too, but the X-Men were my original love. Absolutely love those films. They were a really good time for me. And then later when I saw um, the Sookie Stackhouse uh, TV series, I was like, oh yeah, I remember her. That's Rogue. And it was kind of exciting for me. Although I still don't know her name either, but I loved her in, as Rogue and I did actually really enjoy True Blood. That's what it was. That's what they called it. The book series. I'd read the book series first, and there, and there, you called the like the Sookie Stackhouse book series, like Club Dead and all of that. Absolutely amazing. If you haven't read the books, I definitely recommend you do so. They were a good time. And you'll find some like deviation from the TV series. So if you've seen the TV series all the way through, it won't be like something you've already seen before. There'll be some, some new nuggets for you. And I've had a little bit of line work go awry here. So I'm gonna probably come back with a little bit of my regular green to correct that because I did too many repeated errors in the same spot. So I'm just going to ignore it for now and come back to fix it. Show of hands. How do you feel about this painting so far? Are the dots frustrating or soothing for you? For me, because I guess I've gotten so used to doing them, they're kind of soothing to do. Just it's the repetition of it is very calming for me rather than irritating or obnoxious. But I can respect that for other people, if they're not used to it, doing this, this might be a bit repetitive for them. All right, now I'm gonna turn my canvas a little bit so I can get to this bottom section. Because at this point, all of my dots are very, very wet. I don't think I remember truly the last time I was in the parks. Like what I was doing. I think it was, I think I had gone to Epcot and laid in the sun because it was cold. Because my pass was, I mean, my pass was new. I had gotten it 
in November of 2018? No, 20, 20, 2019, November of 2019. And I had gone to Fall Dapper Day and I think the last time I had gone was January. It was very, very sad. I'm hoping to make it back there, hoping you know the world's okay enough for me to be back there soon. I miss it. All right, I'm gonna flip it again because I can't quite get to where I need to. Being very careful to only touch the back of the canvas. And I'm gonna turn this a little bit so I can get to that side and go down the side of my canvas. And I'm almost out of the yellow on my palette, but I'm gonna to try to make it work so that we don't have to put any more on since we're pretty much done with the yellow once I finish this corner and I'm, I'm not gonna make it. So I'm gonna use the inside of my cap because I don't wanna use more paint than I have to. Okay, so we've got our yellow dots in. And as you can see, I had a couple of areas where my lines got, my dots got a little out of control. So I'm gonna take some of my original base green, just a little, and I'm gonna clean up my line a little, so that way it kind of reshapes that a little and makes it less, less overloaded. That kind of cleans that up a little bit and it happens sometimes mistakes happen and if a glob is too big you can always kind of reshape it and I have a couple to do over here too a little bit got out of hand All right, so our yellow is in. I'm very happy with it. Very happy with how it's looking so far. I think I'm gonna go ahead and, I think I'm gonna add a little bit of that clear glow in the dark paint I was telling you about. Just cause I think that, you know, there could be something more going on in his eyes, not a whole lot. And I wouldn't want it to be visible while the paint, you know, while it's, um, while it's under standard lighting, non-UV or not in the dark. I wouldn't want it really visible. But I think it could be fun if there was something there, a little more there at night. So I'm just going to add just that, the barest little bit. It may not even show up. I'm not even sure. We're, we're just going to give it a try. At minimum, it might add a little bit of clear, bumpy texture, and that's okay. Even if all it does is add texture, that's fine because this will dry clear.
Okay. And that's all I'm going to do with that. And that's just Deco Art Ultimate Glow. Nothing, nothing special. All right, now I'm going to give my, my paint a drying because now I want to do something going on here in the background. I still wouldn't risk touching my background, but I'm going to have to let this be good enough just because otherwise we will not finish in time. So I'm going to take orange, I think, and start with that. And I think I'm going to do a little bit of um, like caterpillars and bugs first. We're going to do a variety. I'll probably use some of the blue. I'll probably use some of the orange. I may use some of the, you know, the, the green on the outside here too. We'll see kind of how that goes. But I do think I want to do a little bit with orange first. So I'm going to take my smallest brush. And I'm going to kind of form like a loose S using little dots. So I'm trying to kind of make a wiggly worm. Well, a reverse S, I guess, in this case. So we kind of got the, the outline of our, our little worm there. And we're going to fill it in with, with little, little dots. It doesn't matter if it's perfect or, you know, we're not, we're not aiming for that. At this point, we're just trying to, like, indicate that there's some bugs. So we kind of got a bug there. And let's maybe have like, maybe one that's coming off the canvas up here. I'll kind of maybe put it going up in this direction. And I'm resting my hand at the top of my easel just to avoid touching my canvas. Because like I said, this paint is takes a very long time to dry. Right, so I kind of got a little hint of a worm or something up there too. You know what? Let's make that more of like a centipede. We, since that's just kind of the top of it, we're we're gonna maybe add a little bit of leg. We'll make this one a little different. And then the leg on the other side. Let's 
do some ants. Let's do some ants. We're gonna do the ants in the in the green. Now let's do a beetle first. Let's do a beetle. Okay, and again, I'm gonna rest my hand at the top of my easel to avoid touching it. And I'm gonna do like a little conical kind of shape for the head. And then I'm gonna let it round out to a body that's a little bit bigger. And then I'm gonna kind of let it come down to a natural point there. I think it's got kind of a thing for its wings here. And then it's got legs. And it's it's got six legs, I think. Oop, and I want to anchor my hand down on the ground of my table to avoid touching my canvas. So we kind of got the hint of a bug there and we're gonna fill that in with more green dots. Actually, yeah, more green dots. And that might be a little hard to see in this lighting. It looks clear for me, but it might not for you but it's kind of, so that way it's more visible for you for a second. Flip back. And I think I'm gonna use some of the yellow in there with it just because the green on its own isn't very super visible in the UV. And I want, you know, my bugs to be hyper visible. And I might kind of go back in and add some yellow on top of my, my centipede and my worm too. So I'm anchoring my, my elbow down on the, on the ground, on the table. And I'm gonna kind of do my outline again. And down the center. You know what? We'll do his legs that way too. Just to help them get seen a little better. So I kind of got that shape in there and I'm gonna add some stripes to my worm. Just a little bit of something to help it pop a little more. And we'll go ahead and we'll do the body on the centipede. Although I think I might want to wait for that one to dry a little more. 
because I think it's just going to mix the color if I do it right now. We'll try though. We'll give it a try. Again, resting my hand on the top of my easel so that way I don't stick my hand down in my paint. And I'm going to highlight its legs in the yellow too. And then the last leg up here on the top. Okay, so I kind of outlined my leg a little bit. And I think I'm going to do a couple of ants in like the blue. Because I think that will show up kind of nicely. So I'm going to do a head. And then an oval thorax. And I'm going to kind of fill in the center a little bit. And do six legs. And then little antennas. And then the leg on the other side. And again, I think I'm gonna follow up with some of the yellow when it's done to help kind of highlight that in there so it's kind of noticeable that it's there. And I think I wanna add some dice. I think I want to add some a dice, just like one down here in the bottom. And I think I'm gonna do that in straight yellow. And kind of thinking about the way that a cube works, we've got our square. I'm doing this part kind of light at first. I'm having to remember how to dimensionally draw that. But I think I've got this right. Although I think that part was supposed to go there. Yeah, I did one line too many. So I'm gonna take a little bit of my, my base pink and kind of get rid of this line. So that way it doesn't show up. All right, and now that I'm kind of a little more confident about my, my design, I'm gonna go back in and, and make those lines a little, a little heavier because they're not super noticeable right now. And I will make the dice holes orange, I think. No, green. Make the dice holes green. So I'm gonna do one. Two. And three. I'm gonna probably have to 
have to go over those and make them a little darker, but for now, it works. And I'm going to kind of cover the cover the remaining part of the dice in like orange dots. And now I'm kind of just going to do little swirls, I think, with the colors that I've got remaining on my palette. And then we're almost done with this one. And then I'm gonna kind of come over here and add a little bit of yellow to my spider that I drew, or my ant, excuse me, my ant because it's not super visible. That's a little more visible. And I think I'm gonna do a little bit of like swirls in blue in this upper corner. So I'm gonna pick up my canvas and move it around. Kind of using any of the UE paint that I've still got like left on my palette. That's that's kind of how I'm choosing what colors to do. I'm just finishing up what I've got out already, so none of it is wasted. We know how I feel about wasted paints. We do not like it. We do not like it. No, we not. And we're going to be very careful not to disrupt any of the design that we have already done. I'm kind of carefully going around my bugs, making sure I'm not cutting off their legs. And I'm going to flip it over and do a little bit of blue in another corner because I don't want all of them, my spirals, the same color. So I'm going to do one over here too. We are almost done with this one. So I don't want it to kind of overlap where that spider is because that spider or that ant is blue and it will kind of get lost if I do that. And we don't want that. So for down there, I am thinking green to finish out this bottom area.
And while I'm there, I'll touch, add a little, add another little layer to my, my dice dots. And we'll make the center of the circle a little further down so it can radiate out. If you're worried about your bugs disappearing, you know, it's not a big deal if they do. They were just part of your background. They weren't a major focal point of your painting. You were just kind of adding some, some breakup and interest to your design. So if they do get lost, you know, don't panic. It just means they got reabsorbed back into Oogie Boogie. My bugs, my bugs. You're fine. And we'll get the, the bottom side of this after our painting is dry. Because I don't want to risk um, it getting a little messed up trying to turn it around. I think we could have a little bit of green going on up in this upper corner too. I've got a little bit left. And we're gonna make it like it's kind of all in that area. And I think we'll do a little orange over there. And we'll make the start of the center kind of here. And again, just make sure you don't intentionally cut off their legs for any bugs that you've put down. All right, and I'm thinking that it is pretty much done. And I'm gonna sign my name in black at the bottom. There we go. We are finished. I'd have to go back and do my bottom piece a little bit later, but I do need to let it dry. So we are counting ourselves finished. This is Oogie Boogie. Nice to meet you. And this is what it looks like in standard lighting. And I'll flip all of my lights back now. Standard light. There we go. And that's what it looks like in standard lighting. I'm glad you had time to meet me at the easel. I'm going to rinse off and get ready to start Hades in approximately 30 minutes. Hope to see you there. Bye.